My name is Miriam Shakir, and I'm with the um, College of uh, Social and Behavioral Sciences, but I'm working with the Education College this summer, um, specifically with the Education Policy Department. And my research um, entailed um, this summer was about rationalizing racism, Tucson Unified School District's employment of euphemisms in um, the assaults on Mexican American studies. So last presentation I talked about the, um, just to kind of recap, I talked about the political climate and caveats leading to the elimination of Mexican American studies in Tucson. Um, and then um, it, it just basically some background as far as some things that were going on um, politically prior to the introduction of the bill HB 2281. And, um, also, just a little background on the school board superintendents, um, Huppenthal, John Huppenthal, um, who was actually um, um, proceeding Horn, who, was, who served as a school board superintendent from 2003 to 2010, and he's now the attorney general. But both of these subjects are people that I'm looking at as representatives of Tucson Unified School District. That's the title, um, and, and, and actually calling it Tucson Unified School District's attack on Mexican American studies. So um, primary literature used for my methods um, was similar to what I talked about in the last presentation in um, modeling after uh, Richard Orozco um, and his um, anti-American discourse used in favor of um, politicians um, looking at um, eliminating Mexican American studies and then also looking at um, Simpson's um, analysis of um, state superintendents open letter to the the citizens of Tucson, um, Tom Horn actually, um, the letter that he uh, released to the citizens of Tucson and, and his argument for why it should be eliminated. And um, so I, I use a lot of his methods. And then also, um, and even just pulling and building on arguments he already made, as well as Brown Tide Rising by Santa Ana, which was very pertinent to my study just because she looks at metaphors um, for Latinos um, in um, a lot of political texts. Um, and then specifically she does have a chapter on students as a means, not an end. And she does look at specifically education terms used, uh, metaphors that are used to describe um, Latinos. Um, so my research question to reiterate again is uh, what rationale is the state attorney um, general um, Tom Horn and school superintendent Huppenthal employ when accessing power discourse circles to depict Mexican American studies program as a program worthy of elimination despite evidence and opinions on the part of Tucson Unified School District uh, students and teachers to the contrary. Okay, so primary sources I used were opinion editorials. There's not, there, there are a few here and there, but they're very, very hard to find. And so I have a couple of those that I use, as well as findings of noncompliance and um, a few other outside texts that have not really been looked at in this way. And also, um, I use uh, a lot, again, of um, Santa Ana's method of um, looking at la language more so than anything history, ethics, context. So that's, that quote's just kind of reinforcing that. So it's really hard to explain how, um, how, I, how I analyze, but it's something called content, um, content analysis. But it's a very broad umbrella for like, specific methods that you can go about looking at um, primary text, and just all texts in general. So um, I'm going to actually go through and give you guys an example of something I would do. So this is um, a finding by the state superintendent, public instruction, um, a violation by TUSD pursuant. And that's just a fancy way of saying Tom Horn um, at the time. This is something he wrote, um, and this is a paragraph out of like 15 pages. So it gives you an idea of what you have to do as far as looking at these texts. So um, I'll just read it. It says, the materials go on to state white Americans often feel a unique sense of entitlement to Americanism, partly because many never travel beyond the borders of the United States. So Tom Horn says, all of these kinds of racist propaganda are fed to young and impressionable students who swallow them whole as illustrated by the rude behavior of some students during an address by Margaret Young, uh, Garcia Dugan and subsequent demonstrations. They, the education they are receiving to deal with disagreements in an uncivil manner, manner will be dysfunctional for them as adults. It becomes a duty of people of Arizona through their elected officials as authorized by ARS 
15.112 to put a stop to this and to be sure that taxpayer funded um, public schools teach students to treat each other as individuals and not on the basis of race they happen to have been born into. So breaking that up, um, the reason I underlined the racist propaganda because you can like just pull, just what I did was a preliminary um, look at all the texts and just drawing on things I already knew, not even bringing in other texts and concluding. Um, you can see a case of cognitive dissonance here where you actually don't associate yourself with um, ideas that you're accusing others of. So it's like basically, con it's like basically hypocrisy. So um, you, it, what he does here is he equates race consciousness to racism. But technically he's being race conscious, conscious and, and stating this and uh, in a very um, roundabout way, he's um, accusing Mexican American studies of being racist. So he never actually, well he does actually say it here, but I mean in most of the text he does not say it. So um, this is just one example. Also, here he um, also used constructivism. So in that same quote, um, you can pull, I pulled from um, Santa Ana's uh, use of metaphors for learning. And one is the co um, constructivism, and it's basically, constructivism is assuming that there's like cognitive uniformity across the board. So everybody basically thinks in the same frameworks and they're coming from the same backgrounds, which is not always the case. Um, so, which she talks about more, but that, that can be seen as an example of constructivism. More specifically, it's called banking, um, it, well, it's sometimes referred to as banking education or, um, I believe I talk about it more in the next slide, but it's, it's another, it's an example of kind of like a slippery slope, non sequitur argument where you're saying because of one thing, like A equals B, but there's nothing really proving it in between except for your own um, preconceived notions. So um, also, yeah, that, the equation of rude behavior by some students, basically referring to the demonstrations, um, is also not really proven to be something um, rude, it's just an inference made by him because he assumes that students should not be active in their education process and that it should solely be like empty vessels just to be filled and not really contribute. So um, these are, this talks about how um, the part where he says the education they're receiving to deal with disagreements in an uncivil manner will be dysfunctional to them as adults. These are all the teachers that um, taught um, Mexican American studies. So it just seems really irrelevant for him to bring that up because all these teachers, um, you know, it, it's obvious they're all brown. And it's like basically inferring that they're not, they're dysfunctional. Um, so it's kind of a red hearing, honestly, because it's irrelevant to the argument he's making. And so it's like a distraction from what he's really trying to say. Again, a euphemism, a light way of putting um, a negative frame on a program. So another part he says, um, 